Veteran on the Move, episode number eight. Welcome to Veteran on the Move, your pathfinder to freedom. If you're a transitioning veteran, an entrepreneur wannabe, or someone who's still stuck in that J-O-B trying to escape, this podcast is dedicated to your success. So welcome aboard, sit back, and enjoy the ride. Hey everybody, today we're talking to Colonel David Smith, U.S. Marine Corps retired a career Huey pilot. He also served as the commanding officer of NADEP in Cherry Point. It's a Naval Aviation Depot rework facility where they break aircraft down to parade rest and uh, build them back up after their inspections and then send them back out to the fleet. He retired after 30 years, 30 years of service uh, just a couple years ago and has been involved in uh, some philanthropic organizations down in Florida. And now he's running for Congress in Florida's 7th District. Colonel David Smith, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Uh, good, Joe. It's good to be with you. Well, hey, uh, we're talking about uh, veterans in transition, uh, particularly into entrepreneurship and uh, running their own businesses and that kind of thing. And I thought folks might find it interesting to hear a little bit about your transition out of the Marine Corps and how you got into politics. Uh, sure. Uh, I tell you, Joe, my... Uh my transition out of the Marine Corps started uh, uh, probably the last three years I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, some people came to me out of the business community and, uh, and out of the veterans uh, uh, community here in, in Central Florida and, and what we refer to as the greater Orlando area about uh, uh, pursuing uh, uh, running for office uh, after, uh, after I retired. Uh, so really, we had about three years to begin planning and assessing uh, e- everything, uh, just like a good battle plan. It's you know, it's all about the planning. Uh, but uh, as we all know, uh, no plan uh, survives contact with the enemy either. Well, that brings up a good point. Long before you retired from the Marine Corps, you were already uh, plotting your demise, and uh, I think that's a that's a key element to a, a successful transition. Is you got to start thinking about it and coming up with ideas and plans way ahead of time. If, if you come up, come up on your EAS and you haven't thought of anything at that point, uh, then it may be tough going there for, for you for a while. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, probably uh, the single uh, uh, biggest trend that I see when, when I help. But it is, uh, uh, for my last tour in the Marine Corps here in Orlando, uh, running the Marine Corps office for simulation training out of uh, uh, Marine Corps Systems Command, I was the senior Marine officer in Central Florida. So as, as Marines transitioned and Marines uh, thought about moving to Florida, was uh, uh, quite often I would get resumes uh, from people, from friends all over the country. Uh, a friend of a friend gave me your name and, uh, hey, is there anything you can do to, to get me uh, uh, connected in the Orlando business area? Running, we, we had about 200 Marines and government civilians at PM Traces, Program Manager Training Systems. Uh, and we had about $1.4 billion worth of projects. So we were uh, an integral part of what we call Team Orlando, which is the uh, root of that is the simulation and training industry, which is the second largest industry in Central Florida after tourism. Uh, so we're certainly known for uh, Disney World and uh, Universal Studios, Sea World, Legoland, uh, but after that comes simulation and training. So I got a lot of resumes from Marines and other veterans saying, "Hey, can you connect me to somebody who's hiring uh, in, in the Central Florida area?" So I got I was very busy uh, helping veterans here locally and other veterans that wanted to relocate. Uh, and the biggest thing I saw was the lack of planning. Of uh, you know answering those questions uh, well in advance. What do you want to do when you retire? Where do you want to live? How much do you want to make? What really? What do you want to do? Uh, uh, that that helps uh, solve a lot of those things. And you have to that has to be you have to balance those factors out, uh, or you're not going to be happy in whatever career path you you pursue after the Marine Corps. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective you had uh, as a veteran yourself or even still there on active duty at the end and you were already seeing other veterans uh, struggling through the transition process. Now, in the, uh, in the context of networking, uh, what difference do you think it made when you saw a resume or got a resume from somebody you knew or a friend of a friend versus uh, 
somebody just going at it alone and applying for the job uh, by themselves. Yeah, if you're um, if you're going it alone and you're just uh, responding to trade magazines or uh, open announcements in uh, Monster.com or some of some of those types of things uh, that are out there on the internet, or or you just drop your resume in one of those. Uh, machines that, that distribute it out there, you're, uh, you're doomed. Uh, your chances of success uh, solely on uh, an, an internet or, or even a headhunter, I, I think, is, uh, it puts you at a significant disadvantage uh, to an active network of friends helping friends, veterans helping veterans. I, I think most of the good jobs are filled before they ever get posted. Uh, out in, in an HR system, you, know, you really have to have an active network uh, to be as successful as you uh, have the potential to be. Absolutely, and and it, and it it does take years to to build a network like that. And uh, I think sometimes y- your typical veteran may underestimate the network that they already have. They just don't really know how to put it into action. And uh, the uh, what you were talking about as far as uh, going at it alone, um, a lot of times even those really good jobs, they might be filled before they get posted, but because of legalities or HR policies, the jobs are still going to get posted. And you might think you might have a chance at it, but there's probably somebody that's already networked their way into it, and they just post it as a formality uh, just to make sure that it's le- legitimately uh, sourced. Yeah, I think that happens. Uh, much more than people realize. <laughs> and so, so what did you do? What were you doing uh, right out of right out of the Marine Corps there for a while? Uh, I know you, I know you were getting involved with uh, some philanthropic type organizations and some charitable work. Right. Well, it goes back to uh, 2009 uh, when I gave up command in uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, and running the depot, like you mentioned. I, I had the unique opportunity back-to-back uh, uh, command slate. Uh, so I went from one uh, colonel command to another colonel command down here. Uh, but as I, uh, as I accepted the orders uh, for my last assignment here in Orlando, uh, I had the, the prompting. Uh, Headquarters Marine Corps sent me a very nice letter uh, reminding me I had to be out of the Marine Corps by 1 September 2012. Uh, and... Uh, when I hit uh, my 30-year uh, high tenure mark as a, as a colonel. So that uh, that let me know going into this tour that this was the end of the line. And uh, so I, I knew that when I hit boots on the ground uh, in Florida in, in May of, uh, uh, really, really actually uh, May of 2009, that uh, this was the end of the line. So I started getting involved putting down roots in the community and getting involved in groups that, while I was bouncing around from duty station to duty station throughout my career, I never really had the chance uh, to get involved with a, a, with a church uh, regularly and, a, uh, uh, and, and involved with uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, then I got on the, uh, the board of directors of the Regional Chamber of Commerce. I was invited uh, to participate there just because of my business background. And then I uh, got on the board of directors of the YMCA. I, I learned to swim at a YMCA, and uh, uh, and a lot of underprivileged kids do that also. And I do some fundraising for them to to help uh, uh, prevent childhood drowning, and uh, which is an issue in Florida. And then I also, because I've, I've worked with rescue animals and have a rescue Labrador retriever named Rex. He's laying around here somewhere, but. Uh, <laughs> I got on the uh, board of directors of the SPCA, uh, and, uh, or Humane Society, as most people know it by. Uh, so I got involved in those type of community events. And then uh, here, the uh, Orange County Bar Association has a Veterans Advisory Committee. And uh, we've recently stood up uh, a, a veterans court uh, for, uh, for uh, veterans that get, a, get in a little trouble with the law, and uh, they get them into a diversion program and, and uh, uh, get proper treatment from the VA and uh, we, uh, we can keep them out of jail is, uh, is typically the goal and get them onto a path to recovery or whatever their 
either as a substance abuse potentially or PTSD type issue with younger veterans. So I got involved in those sorts of things, which really allowed me to better understand the people um, that live here in Central Florida. And then along that path, uh, some some people said, Dave, uh, we think you ought to consider running for Congress uh, upon your retirement. You know? And that's what I'm doing. Now, after, after 30 years of being around nothing but Marines, of course, you had a lot of uh, civilians working for you up at NADAP, and you kind of had a, a soft transition your last three years down there in Florida. But would, would you say that uh, after 30 years of being uh, surrounded by Marines, you're a little, a little twisted and warped in, in certain ways as far as how you do things and how you think of things and interact with, uh, interacting with Marines only? Was it, was it a little bit of adjustment uh, finding yourself out there in the civilian sector? A, a, a little bit. Uh, in that, uh, you know, we don't, uh, I think most Marines as uh, self-starters or when you, when a, a task needs to be done, you just uh, roll up your sleeves and get it done. Uh, and we, we certainly take instruction well, or we take orders well. When, uh, hey, a due date's a due date, or a deadline's a deadline, and and, uh, and we just, uh, uh, you know, have, have had a culture in the Marine Corps, certainly, of just uh, take the message to Garcia, just uh, get the job done. And uh, I tell you, that type of, I'm not even so sure if the, if the right term is work ethic, uh, but that type of motivation, just to see it a see a task to completion, is uh, is something that is not as cut and dry. Uh, it was not as high of expectation out there as you would think. Uh, from a manager level to uh, to a worker level, uh, it's uh, that's one of the things we as Marines or as veterans uh, bring to the workforce uh, that uh, the employers really like is a is a get it done. Um, you know, gung ho, work together type mentality, and that's that. That is, there's definitely some gaps out there in the civilian sector of that type of work ethic. And so, as, you, as you're out there getting uh, involved in a lot of these uh, civilian organizations, the civic organizations, and, and the charitable organizations, did you did you did you find your way into politics because you saw a void, or there that there was something that that was missing and something you had to offer? Yes, uh, we need uh, we need more veterans in Congress. I think we have a, a, a lack of military experience in the Congress today that, that uh, creates problems for foreign policy, or you create problems when they start to, uh, deciding to just take a uh, take a, a, a meat cleaver to the uh, defense budget. Uh, and, and one of those things, if you uh, like most Americans believe that uh, we have uh, peace through strength. Uh, so if you believe that, uh, then you have to believe the opposite, that, uh, that war comes through weakness. And I'm very concerned about the, the significant budget cuts uh, and when people start declaring a peace dividend and, uh, and plan to bring our troop strength across the, the entire Department of Defense to below pre-World War II levels, uh, that starts to be uh, uh, bells and whistles start going off, uh, master caution light illuminates in your cockpit saying this is uh, this is uh, uh, dangerous so I think we I think most people would agree that we need uh, more veterans in Congress because we have the lowest participation of, of veterans in Congress today than since World War II uh, so so that's a that was a void that people saw uh, here in Central Florida uh, and, and it's also uh, really that that uh, uh, leadership skills that uh, veterans have, that Marines have, uh, and also a sense of, of, you know, that esprit de corps, that we're a part of something bigger than us, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, that attitude, which, which I think in a nutshell gets kind of summed up into service over self. And, and I think we could use a little bit more of that in, in uh, government today. And, and, and I don't mean just, I don't just mean up in Congress at the federal level. I think we need that service uh, over self, uh, service before self at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level uh, to fix some of the problems and address some of the concerns that, that people have at, at those uh, local, state, and federal levels. Now, you mentioned that uh, there's not very many veterans serving in, in Congress these days. 
and that's it, it may be at an all-time low, but but that's not necessarily a new thing. It's been that way for for a couple decades at least. Why, why do you suppose there aren't very many veterans in Congress? Because the draft ended in 1973. Uh, you know, when compulsory military service uh, ended, uh, you know, and then right on the you know right there at the end of in the Vietnam, you just started a demographic shift. Uh, fewer and fewer veterans, and, and it's uh, it certainly has come down. Uh, and and uh, you look at the chart; it's kind of stayed down, even with uh, with uh, uh, Desert Storm veterans and uh, now uh, uh, OAF OEF uh, veterans getting elected to Congress. But what's at the same at the same rate? Uh, uh, World War II, Korean, and even Vietnam veterans are are. Uh, are leaving uh, government service, so it's it's about balance, and, and then it's it's at nineteen percent uh, right now across the Congress, and and, uh, and that's a that's an all time low since World War II. Okay, so really, it's 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 more of a numbers game. There's really these days, there's just even though our military has been heavily engaged for the last uh, twelve plus years, our military is actually relatively smaller than it has been in the past by by a number of people. Uh, very true. And, and I think uh, there's an issue of, of uh, uh, people that are called to continue to serve. And uh, I, I think some people, whether you do four years or you do 20 years and retire or you do 30 years like I do, uh, like I did, is uh, uh, then to think that you're going to, you know, uh, jump you know, out of the frying pan into the fire, and uh, and, and get into the the uh, nasty business of politics. Uh, some people are just like, hey, I don't need it. Uh, you know, I, I did my turn in the barrel. I served my country. Uh, uh, I don't want to put my family through this. And because uh, it's you know one of the uh, I, I lost my father uh, last year, <clears throat> and he is now a uh, retired army. Uh, officer, and he's, uh, he's now PCS up to uh, Arlington National Cemetery last year, and um, mm-hmm. uh, you know when I told him that I was looking very seriously at, at running for office, and I've been approached by some some people here in the business community, veteran community, he just he just shrugged his shoulders and was like, "Why do you want to do that?" And uh, and it was just like, "You you you served the country, go do something else." And uh, <laughs> Why would you put yourself through that? And, and, uh, you know, so there's, and that's a legitimate, it's a legitimate point. Uh, and if somebody uh, thinks they could do it and, and choose not to, then then, uh, uh, then, then they, uh, then, then that's their prerogative. Uh, that's their choice. I, I, I looked at it uh, and came to the conclusion: it, it really, it, it's not me. Who? Uh, we don't uh, get some. Some veterans up in Congress to look out for our military and look out for our country, uh, look out for the Constitution that we've all sworn an oath to support and defend that I believe is under assault. And if we don't uh, get some more veterans in Congress to provide better oversight uh, of the VA, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to continue to have this mess that we have in the VA and I'm sure everybody's disgusted with the reports that have been in the news about the uh, veterans dying, waiting to get the health care that they they rate. Uh, uh, so we've got to we've got to get some people up there that are uh, are action oriented, mission focused, get the job done kind of people. And, and I think veterans are the ones that should be stepping up to do that. And, and the other thing, the other reason I'm running for Congress is I'm tired of yelling at my TV. <laughs> it's, it's oh, yeah. not, of us out there uh, that hasn't at some point in time seen something on the news that they were so upset about, they, they said, I could do better than that, and have had that thought flash through their head that they might like to run for office someday. Uh, and I've just taken it to the next level uh, and uh, resigned my corporate position um, back in December to be a full-time candidate. I, I put my own money into the campaign because I wanted to make sure everybody knew I had skin in the game, uh, and, uh, and I'm asking friends to uh, to invest in my campaign to, to help me be successful, to provide a voice up in Congress for, for all veterans, uh, 
uh, or whether it's military or VA or or to defend our Constitution. And the campaign's going very well. That's great to hear, Sam. And I love the, uh, you know, why not me uh, philosophy of taking charge and uh, you know, taking the bull by the horns and making it happen. So w- was there actually a light bulb moment for you where you said, you know what, I think I'm going to do this? Or was it kind of a, a gradual escalation? I think it was probably a gradual escalation because, believe me, you do not uh, just uh, jump out of the rack one morning and decide, oh, I'm going to run for Congress. It, it simply doesn't work that way. And not if you want to be successful. Because uh, sure. it, it is a lot of deliberate planning a lot of detail planning, organizing, and, and you have to really know that you want to do this because there is no, uh, there's no turning back, uh, and, and you better be 110% committed to do what it takes to be successful, uh, or, you, or the, the political machinery will chew you up, uh, and they don't care uh, um, if there's casualties along the way. That's just the nature of the business of politics, and it's, uh, it's and frankly, uh, it's eye-opening, and it's ugly, dirty business, and it's, uh, this, uh, but I tell you, if we, if we don't start changing it, uh, one elected official at a time, it'll stay ugly, dirty business. And, uh, so everything we've heard about politics is true, huh? Well, I tell you, it's, <laughs> it's not like you see on TV, and uh, it's, it's certainly not like the West Wing episodes, and some of these other things, but it's a, uh, it, it's a grind, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's every, every day I see something that shocks me, where I'm just, that, that couldn't possibly be true, and, uh, and oh, yes, it is, um, and, and, and that's, you know, one of the reasons I'm running is I'm, I'm worried about our country, I'm, I'm worried about America, and if we don't start, uh, fixing some of the things that are wrong uh, and, and some of those things that are wrong are the people that have managed to get into Congress and stay in Congress and, I, and by that I mean career politicians uh, that have forgotten why they were elected in the first place to do the, to do the people business. You know, uh, Joe, it's one of those things, uh, uh, the House of Representatives, you know, I, I truly believe in my heart that representative is a job description, not a job title. Uh, yet career politicians have managed to get elected over and over and over again. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, and they forget who they're, who elected them and, and who they work for. Uh, and it's about special interests. It's about lobbyists. It's about money. Uh, it's about power and access. Uh, it's not about doing the people's business and that's one of the things that has gotten this country off track. Uh, and the people that got us off track, the career politicians, are not the ones that are ever going to get us back on track. So it's time for some new people to be elected to uh, the United States Congress to start fixing some of the problems we have in this country with our tax code, with immigration, uh, with uh, corporate welfare, and uh, and some of the deficit spending and the money we spend that just is money down the drain for for, uh, for people and businesses and, and uh, constituencies, special interests uh, that uh, are no longer needed. We, you know, today we spend at the federal level fifty four cents out of every dollar is borrowed. Uh, no, no business gets to operate this way. Uh, nobody gets to run their household finances this way. Uh, why do the, People in the federal government, members of Congress, think that it's okay to run a government this way. And uh, it's time for people from Main Street, not Wall Street, to be making some of these decisions up in Washington. Now, have you uh, encountered any resistance or um, interesting uh, run ins with anybody in, in the beginning of your? The political process when you when you announced you were going to run and here's here's some guy that's been in the military thirty years and he's going to jump into the world of politics. Well, and not so much resistant, very very uh, maybe just the opposite, uh, very welcoming that uh, everybody respects military service. Uh, so and and in here in Central Florida we do have a, a, a significant uh, retiree older population. Many of those uh, are military veterans. Uh, pre-draft days, so very common. 
uh, that, uh, uh, that so you have a lot of military service, although my opponent is not a veteran uh, in this campaign. I point that out to every VFW and American Legion post I go into. <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, so people respect your military service. They respect your desire to continue to serve the country. Uh, it's the it's the, um, the people that that make frankly that, that at the end of the day it's about power, money, and, and the power is not so much money. The power is access, uh, and there are constituencies. There are the good old boy networks uh, kind of thing that like to keep status quo because they make money off of it uh, and, and they, they have business interests that are benefited by keeping uh, the, the career politicians in office those are the ones that are upset with me and, and, and I'm okay with that yeah well sure I mean if, if you happen to have access to the incumbent then why would you want that to change because you're going to have to figure out how to get access to the new guy if it changes yeah, I think uh, I think that's a lot of people's uh, thoughts, uh, but it's about uh, you know uh, being on the inside. Uh, that's why people give money to campaigns or big money to campaigns and those kind of things. It's it's about uh, being somebody taking your phone call and getting invited to the right party and getting seated at the right uh, table and, and uh, uh, it, it, it's those kind of things that, that sometimes put uh, the you know, working men and women, uh, senior citizens, and certainly veterans, uh, you know, maybe get pushed aside. Yeah. As an example, we have a, a VA hospital that's being built here in Central Florida uh, to support a, a very large facility, hundreds of millions of dollars, world-class facilities, three years behind schedule. You know, I have 84,000 veterans that live in my district that are uh, that need that hospital. They needed that hospital three years ago. And, uh, uh, and that's a problem when it's, uh, it's behind schedule and, and won't open for even another year. So it, it's lack of attention to detail. It's lack of focus. It's, uh, it's, they work on the projects they want to work on. And, and in this case, with that VA hospital and the backlog of appointments, certainly the backlog of disability claims that every veteran knows about, is, uh, it's, it's not a priority. But if, if elected, it'll be a priority of mine. Now, speaking of the VA, uh, you, you mind telling us what your experience was uh, going through the VA system when you retired recently? Well, you know, I, I tell you that one of the complaints about the VA is always about the bureaucracy. Uh, mm-hmm. But as I talk to veterans and veterans' family members, especially much older veterans, uh, when they're dealing with the VA, you know that the, the doctor patient relationship or healthcare provider nurse physician assistants in, in right. the VA, it's very good. You know, this these aren't bad doctors and nurses and healthcare providers. It's the bureaucracy uh-huh. of the appointment, getting your issues resolved, getting your paperwork uh, processed. And, and uh, I mean, you know, most of the time you can't get, you can't get a, a, a you know, a, a stub toe issue resolved in one visit. It's always come back and Oh, we got to take X-rays. Now you got to come back, and, and now we got to get somebody. Oh, the guy who reads the X-rays not here today. You got to come back, and, and uh, uh, that's really the bureaucracy of the system of the VA, which you know is no small enterprise. Uh, you know, the the VA uh, healthcare system is the single largest healthcare provider in the United States. I I, I remember going through the VA process myself uh, last year, and I, I remember hearing coming to the realization that, yeah, it was the largest uh, medical system in the U.S. That's incredible. But the, you know, and many people just think, you know, they immediately snap to, well, let's, let's just uh, outsource it. Why, you know, every veteran should get a, you know, a, a card that says they're a veteran in the VA system and they can just go to uh, whatever hospital or doctor that they want to see. And, and, uh, and I tell you, that sounds great. The problem is it's outrageously expensive compared to the VA healthcare system. Because again, those doctors are out of their salaried employees. So there is no profit motive for VA doctors. Uh, and, and, and so a lot of, I'm not saying that we shouldn't outsource people. VA currently outsources and it should probably outsource more, especially to get through this, this log jam of, 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 of 
backlog of, of appointments. Uh, but the VA is not structured. Uh, it, it's it's uh, exponentially, well, that's, that's, that's uh, an excessive term. It's, it's significantly more expensive if we uh, outsource. Uh, so it, the VA does need to be reformed, but the health care, the, the doctor patient care is pretty good. Uh, and that's been my experience, and, and uh, it's been the experience of many of the people I've talked to, with, with, with exceptions. But you get that out, and even in a civilian, uh, civilian hospital. Sure, nothing's perfect. And my experience was actually very good. I, in, in some ways, I was actually very impressed. I had no issues. I went through the uh, VA system up in the Kansas City area. So, um, yeah, just it does not surprise me some of the issues you hear in the news and stuff like that because I can see how something like that could get out of hand but my experience was actually quite good so um, well I wanted to uh, uh, wrap this up here real quick uh, if, if you had any parting words uh, I'd like to hear what you said but and before we go I, I need to know when the victory party is and where it's going to be at well I think the first victory party will be in and uh, in, we hope it in 56 days my uh primary election. Again, I'm trying to unseat a career politician, a 22-year incumbent, and our election here in Florida in the Republican primary uh, is the 26th of August. Uh, then the general election is in uh, the 4th of November. Uh, but all, right now, our, our focus and main effort is winning the primary, and, uh, uh, and people can learn more about my campaign if they'd like at uh, davidsmith4congress.com. We made it as simple as we could, uh, and, and you'll see some videos and uh, hear issues and just topics discussed. You hear it from my lips uh, directly what I believe, not what I think, but what I believe, and there's a difference. Uh, and also, you can see some of the issues and where I uh, stand on many of the important topics that today are listed there. So you can watch a video or read it and, and uh, follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And, you can do all of that through the website, and, and you can even make a donation if you like. So look for the big red donate button. Donations are always appreciated. Yes, yeah. The, the, uh, you you got to feed the beast, and that's uh, and campaigning is uh, is a tough job, uh, but uh, it comes from radio and television and direct mail and and uh, making phone calls and doing those things of getting out and meeting voters and. Uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Joe. It's a, a small donations are greatly accepted. And I tell you, that's really the power uh, that we have as veterans uh, to be a part of something bigger is, uh, is be a part of a network. Uh, when you look at what the veterans could do, uh, somebody make a $3, $5, or make a $10 donation. Well, if all veterans did that, we'd get more veterans elected to Congress to clean up uh, we clean up the VA with the right people in Congress, so that's, that's my sales pitch for the day. All right, sir. Well, it's been great talking to you again. Uh, you know, I served with you many years ago. We, we flew together, deployed together, um, kept in touch here and there, uh, ran Marine Corps crossroads uh, here and there a few times in our career, and uh, it's uh, good hearing your uh, transition out of the Marine Corps and uh Best of luck to you in your campaign. I'll be watching it uh, and uh, hope that hope you do make it through the primary in August and uh, and beyond. And uh, look forward to seeing you up in D.C. here in, in the next uh, few months. Well, thank you, Joe. I really do appreciate it. All right, sir. Thanks. I'm out. Thank you for listening to Veteran on the Move, your pathfinder to freedom. If you like the show, leave us a review on iTunes. Reviews are always greatly appreciated. So until next time, this veteran is Oscar Mike.